Amen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead on and pray. <clears throat> Father, I come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, just thanking you for this opportunity to speak. I pray, Lord, that you would speak through me, guide me through the scriptures, and through the spirit of my heart, the Holy Spirit, to speak forth your word, how it needs to be spoken, Lord. You guide me and direct me. And I just pray that you would minister to those who are listening, if there's any veils, any restrictions, God, I ask that those who are watching, that the veil and the restriction would be removed in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So um, today, uh, it's just, I started getting stirred up about, uh, you know, this once saved, always saved uh, gospel that many people are falling victim to. And, you know, that's a very dangerous doctrine. You know, I, I seen a, a preacher a while back. Um, he was doing some street preaching and he ran into a preacher uh, at some type of festival. And the preacher had a, a drink in his hand. Actually, he, he was he was intoxicated. And um, he was a Baptist. He uh, he believed that he was saved. He believed he was saved. And um. And he once saved, always saved. He said the sinner's prayer and, you know, he's locked in with God. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if he was actually believing this. He might have been believing this. But there's no way that a person can be experiencing the salvation of the Lord and being drawn by the Lord into a relationship with a holy God and still hold on to unholy things in their life because you can't have a relationship with a holy God where his holiness will not rub off on your unholiness in other words when you in a real relationship with God and you spending time with the Lord you are going to be conformed to his image and his likeness in other words things in your life are going to change you're going to not start to, or you're going to start to not like some of the things that you do because the Holy Spirit is going to bring conviction to deal with you because, you know, you become a, a son. You you begin to experience the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And um, you start to draw away from them things in the world. You start to draw away from um, sin. And, um, you know, you start to pursue Christ in the Word of God. And in 1 John, you know, it, it, there's a scripture that says, those who have this hope in them, they, they seek to pur purify themselves. The hope of what? The hope of Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, they, they have a desire to be like God. They have a desire to be holy. They have a desire to be completely set free from sin. And so, because of this, they pursue Christ. They, um, they're diligent. And holding on and staying rooted and grounded in the word of God. And, and because of, of their diligence of staying rooted and grounded in the word of God, a sanctification happens. A, a cleansing begins to happen to their lives. You see, they become empowered with the spirit of God. They become more cleaner, a cleaner vessel. Uh, they are more able to be filled with the spirit of the Lord. You see, because this sanctification process is happening in their lives through the word of God and the power of the spirit. He he begins to cleanse the corruption of our hearts. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them with your truth. Thy word is truth. And sanctify means to clean or to set apart. So God, through the word of God, is setting your heart apart. Set apart means holy. Set apart means different. You see, he deconforms you from the ways of the world, the sinful ways of the world, and conforms you to the image and likeness of himself. You become different, you see. You become contrary to the people of the world, the, the system of the world, you see, because you begin beginning to be transformed from glory to glory into the image and likeness of God, of Jesus Christ. And that's what holiness means, set apart sanctified clean different all this so god is going to sanctify those who stay rooted and grounded in the word of god but there is also there's always a part to play there's always a corporation on our part 
Christ establishes the righteousness through what he done at the cross. He empowers us with the spirit of God, which makes the word effective. And in first Thessalonians, I think it is. I think it's that. Yeah. First Thessalonians, there's a scripture that says the word of God is effective for those who believe. Why is the word effective? Because those who truly believe possess the presence of Almighty God. And the presence of Almighty God animates the word of God in our hearts. It becomes effective. It begins to weed out and tear down the corruption in our heart. It begins to build in the character of God. Where we become more and more like Jesus Christ. We become holy, set apart. And it only comes from us cooperating with God. You see, so that process can, can continue in our life. The Bible says in Philippians, he says, He who begun a good work in you will finish it until the day Christ comes. So this work of salvation is done um, by God on part of us cooperating with God. Christ is going to do a work in our lives, but we must be rooted and grounded in the Word of God. So this, this process of salvation, this sanctification, this process of repentance can be done. You see, so if we separate ourselves from the Word, we start to drift back, drift back, drift back. Then old iniquities begin to rise up, you see. So I want to open up with um, 2 Peter chapter 2. You see, there's a, there's an explosion of deception right now in, in, in the body of Christ. I mean, people are being deceived left and right. And the Bible says in Matthew and Mark and Luke that in the last days that there is going to be false prophets uh, that's going to rise up. A religious deception, an in intense religious deception. And we see this right now. A lot of people in the Baptist uh, denomination, they hold on to this once saved, always saved doctrine and i believe a lot of them hold on to it because it's a way that eases their conscience from the sin they so much love to indulge in you see it's a comfortable doctrine it allows their conscience to be at ease when they indulging in sin because they claim that they're saved they are right with god you see so the Holy Spirit's not operating in that because the Holy Spirit brings conviction. He's called Holy Spirit because he's looking to bring about holiness in our lives. You see, sanctification. This is what he's doing. So Second Peter says this in, in chapter two, and I'm going to go fast because I'm, I'm running out of time. It says, starting at one, I'm going to go to verse three. But there were also false prophets among the people. Even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who, who bought them and bring on them themselves swift destruction. So this is a heresy that's brought about by false teachers. They are denying the Lord Jesus who shed his blood for them at Calvary. How they deny them? With their lifestyles. They are denying them by the way they are living and indulging in sin and claiming that they belong to Christ. You see, they're not, they're not purifying themselves. There's no sanctification taking place. So they deny Christ by their lifestyle, their, their lavish lifestyle, their sinful lifestyles that they indulge in it. And, and, and second, uh, the second, uh, verse says, and many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth is blasphemed. By covenants, they will exploit you with deceptive words. Okay, they twist the scriptures with, with, with deceptive words. I mean, they, they are a master, uh, at, at making the word of God say what they want us, want it to say. So that it can bring them in a place in their heart where it doesn't bring the conviction that causes them to feel bad or turn away from their sin because they, in truth, they want to hold on to it. See, the truth of the word of God, the, the, the sound doctrine of God's word brings conviction when it's preached by the unction of the Holy Spirit. You will know a true preacher when he's preaching because it will bring some, some conviction. He's going to touch on some real serious issues that's going to cause your heart to be uneasy. It's going to cause you to examine yourself. You're going to say, whoa, I need to put myself in check. You see, he's not going to try to bring something that's going to, to bring some type of ease into your life about sin. 
No, a man of God is against sin. A man of God is at war against sin. He does not like sin. He wars it out of him, his life. And he tries his best to bring a teaching that will bring conviction to the hearts of those who he is overseeing so that those in his congregation, those in his flock would feel the conviction and repent and turn. You see, because he has a heart. He's preaching the sound doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now we're going to look at, um, let's look at 1 Corinthians. Now we know that these false teachers has invaded the church right now. I mean, we can go on talking about so many different things, but today we're going to touch on this once saved, always saved. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, okay, 1 and 2, it says this, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you which also you received and in which you stand. So he's commending them that they received the word and he, the word that he preached to them and that they are standing in the faith. He's commending them in the scripture. Now, verse two, he shoots out a warning. He says, by which also you are saved. If he says, if you hold fast that word, which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain you see so there is the condition to salvation that condition is abiding in christ abiding in the word of god abiding in a relationship a place of surrender you see a, a place of submission unto christ i mean where you are following christ actually a disciple of god i'm in the word continually and why because i'm in the word continually a supernatural sanctification is manifesting in my life i am being conformed my mind is being renewed according to the will of god romans chapter one says i beseech you by the mercies of god to present yourself a living sacrifice holy Holy meaning set apart, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that transformation is a glorified transformation where your character is being conformed to Christ. You see, the Word of God is the character of Christ and the Holy Spirit animates that Word to our hearts and enables us to be conformed to Jesus, where we begin to like what He likes and we begin to hate what He hates. So the Scripture once again says, By which also you are saved, if you hold fast that Word, which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. So there comes a, a point in a person's life, if he don't hold on to the Word of God, he can believe in vain. He can fall back into sin. He can drift away into darkness again, away from Christ, and be excluded from the church because of that, and may not ever come back to God because of that. Now we look at Luke chapter 8. Let's look at this scripture. Chapter 8, verse, uh, this is the parable of uh, the seed. The sower that went sow the seed. So the sower went sow seed in some soil. And um, Jesus, you know, he gave this parable. Then he explained the parable of the seed. Different seeds. Different people who received the word of God in different in different ways. Okay. Now we got the first seed. I'm going to start. I'm going to read the whole parable. The, just the explanation. He says, uh, those by the wayside, and this is in chapter 8, verse 12. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear, then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Okay, what are these people? These people are probably the ones that you go minister to, you go talk to them about God, and they hear the word, and it's good, and they interested in it. They're attracted to what you're saying. But then, all of a sudden, their old buddies come, you know, and they say, hey, come on, let's go, let's go get some beer, you see, and, and, and rather than saying no, they, uh, they, they, they yield to this, and they jump in the car, and they, they go off, and they start drinking beer, and the devil comes and steals that word that you planted in their lives now verse 13 says but the ones on on the rock are those who when they hear they receive the word with joy okay the Bible says that they receive the word with joy you ever got saved before 
If you are saved right now and you ever got saved before, you know when you first got saved, you experienced an explosion of joy. I'm talking the joy of your salvation where you went tell everybody about Jesus. You just wanted to tell everybody about Jesus. You was experiencing the joy of the Lord, the joy of your salvation. So the scripture says that they received the word with joy. And it says, and these have no root who believe. This believe word is actually saving faith. They believe for a while and in time of temptation, they fall away. They was not rooted in the word of God. They was not abiding in the word of God. And when temptation came, they fell away. You see, God calls us to be rooted and grounded in his word, to resist temptation, you see, so that we don't believe in vain. Just like the uh, scripture we just read in Corinthians, you see, them, uh, Paul told them, he says, um, they are saved if they hold on to the word. You see, we got to hold on to the word and keep the word in our heart. It's the word that, that produces salvation and it's the word that keeps us saved. You see, it's, and we got to play our part. We got to spend time with Christ, you see. And if we allow ourselves to drift away from God, I mean, we fall back in sin. Old oh, iniquities come back in. We fall back in the darkness. Then the chastening of the Lord comes. You see, God accepts us when we are saved. He accepts us as a son. And what happens is we start drifting. We fall back into sin. And this is what can happen. God's chastening comes into our life. It comes into our life to try to correct us and get us back on the right path. Just like um, a, a, a loving father would chasten his son, okay, if he if he done some bad things to bring some correction to him, God would do that in our lives, to bring some correction to our lives, okay? Now, he can do it in many ways, through the Word of God or through some adverse circumstances, okay? So, just like... A physical father will move in to chasten his son. His son can either accept that chastening and learn from it and be humble to his father. Okay. Or that son can rebel and get full of hatred at his father and be so offended that he don't want nothing to do with his father anymore. He could not endure the chastening. His heart was broken. So he left his father. Does his father love him? Yes. His father loves him and wants him to come back, but he turned his heart away. He got angry at the chastening of the Lord. So his heart got full of hatred and he never came back. And this is what the scripture says in um, Hebrews. You know, it says in, in Hebrews uh, chapter 13, it says God chastens those who belong to him, those who experience his salvation. He says, my son, this is in chapter 12 of um uh, of Hebrews, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when he is you are rebuked by him for whom the Lord loves. He chastens and he scourges every son he receives. And it says, if you endure chastening, God deals with you in, as sons. OK, so there's an if right there. If you can endure the chastening that is coming to your life because of the correction of God, then God deals with you as a son. See, you got to endure the chastening of the Lord and don't get offended when he corrects you. You see, because you can get offended by God when God brings adversity into your life, when God brings correction into your life, and then you can get offended at God. And when you get offended, you get hateful towards God. Oh, I don't want to be with him no more. You turn away from him just like a physical son does. And if you don't turn back to God, guess what happens? You don't never come back. And you fall away and you stay falling away and you spend an eternity in what the Bible describes as hell fire. So, you know, the scriptures all contest against a, a, a once saved, always saved. That's a false doctrine. That's a doctrine of demons. And um, Paul uh, spoke to Timothy about that in the book of Timothy. He says there's going to be a time when there will be dis people will fall away and give heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So, yes, we have eternal security. We save if we endure in the truth, if we stay rooted and grounded in the truth. That's how you got eternal security. So God bless y'all. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I pray that y'all got something out of this.